What's up, guys? Hello. Um, okay, so uh, my name is Neil, uh, and I am an illusionist and a magician from India. And um, you guys have Dynamo over here, right? Have you guys seen Dynamo? Have you guys seen Darren Brown? Yeah? You haven't seen Darren Brown. So magic is absolutely new for you. You're going to have an amazing time. I'm going to call you up on stage in a bit, yeah? Um, also, so I'm a, I'm a magician from India. I'm uh, 23 years old. I have a television show that comes. Uh, it's called You Got Magic. Uh, and what I do over there is I go all across India. I check out the most magical things. And then in return, I do magic. So it's like a give and take relationship between uh, India and myself. And soon enough, I should be doing this with the entire world. So uh, let's see how that goes. Um, I'm 23, I still have a long way to go, right? So um, in India, approximately 20 years back, there was this uh, magician called PC Sorkar. Yeah? Have you guys heard of him? So PC Sorkar uh, was the one who got uh, this one Indian uh, magic trick, very famous. It's called the Great Indian Rope Trick. Yeah? So the Great Indian Rope Trick is basically you have a rope, uh, you have a basket, you put the rope in the basket and the rope just keeps on going up and up and up and up. And the guy picks up the basket, there's nothing underneath, and he keeps on going up, around 20 feet up in the air. And then there's this kid who just climbs on top of that rope. Right? And the guy can literally pick up the basket, there's nothing under, underneath. So he got this trick really famous. Uh, I don't know if you've he heard of Penn and Teller. Have you guys heard of Penn and Teller? So Penn and Teller have actually uh, tried to figure out the roots of, uh, of this trick, but they haven't been able to. It's actually a very well-guarded secret. Only a few Indian magicians know. So... Um, I'm pretty special that way. Penn and Teller also don't know stuff, right? So, um, so I, what I do is I actually mix uh, real life things such as criminal psychology, uh, neuro-linguistic programming, and uh, hypnosis, which I'm not allowed to do today, so uh, no hypnosis for you guys. I need permissions to do hypnosis. Uh, we don't have permissions. I, I don't need your permission, I need the library's permission to do it. I know I have your permission. You've come all the way from Wales, of course. Um, however, I will be doing a lot of other things. And um, so say hi to Sanjoy, he's the one who's organized this entire thing. Yeah, the, the one with the phone. And um, thank you for getting me over here, firstly. <laughs> and. Um, so now let me explain to you what magic in India is like and how the psychology of magic works. Because magic is the only thing where you want to question it, right? You don't, you don't see a musical performance and you don't be like, oh dude, why, why did you put your finger over there? Why, did you, why didn't you do it like that? Why did you do that, right? You, do, you never do that to a musical performance. You don't do that to a dance performance, right? Similarly, I think you shouldn't do that to a magical performance as well. Uh, I mean, that is just my view, but the reason why everyone wants to question magic is for this reason. Now, I'll tell you about India. I don't know about this place. Uh, I haven't performed much over here, but in India, uh, approximately 20 years back, after PC Sorkar. So PC Sorkar was as big as uh, David Copperfield in India, okay? Uh, you know David Copperfield? Yeah, so he's really big, okay? Uh, so 20 years back, PC Sorkar was way on top. Uh, he was, uh, he was uh, doing uh, stuff at the Asian Games and everything, so he was pretty big, right? And, um, and then, you know, slowly, slowly he started getting old and no one took his place. So, there was this, um, there was this guru, uh, this spiritual man in India, and uh, I happened to go for one of his talks, and he said, uh, 
he was giving me a, an example of why religion has lost its charm. He's, he's, he was saying, uh, just like how you guys see Twitter, how you guys see Instagram, how you guys see Facebook, everything over there is updated. Everything is new. Whatever is trending, you guys see it, right? Whatever is not trending, you guys don't give a shit about it, right? It's, it's just how we guys are. It's how we guys have been programmed. And, and if you look at it, why do you go for, why do all the cinema halls play the latest movies? Why do the radio stations play only the latest songs? That's because we as human beings have been psychologically influenced into believing that whatever is trending, whatever is new, is in, right? And whatever is bygone is bygone, right? It's not relevant. And that is something that had happened with religion as well, uh, in India especially. And I was like, whoa, that's the same scene for magic as well, because, uh, because no one had updated magic in 20 years, right? And because no one updated magic in 20 years, this is what the scene was. Now, you have, uh, if I ask all of you guys to close your eyes and imagine an Indian magician, most of you would imagine a, a person with a bright Sherwani wearing a top hat and someone doing abracadabra, gilly gilly chew, right? Uh, that is the image of magic in India. And that was formed in the last 20 years. Uh, and why was it formed? Because people stopped caring. Uh, it, was, it was more like, supposing if I, if I charge 10,000 rupees, right? If I charge, uh, and if someone else's price is also approximately the same, I would have a performance for 10,000 rupees, right? Now the other person would be like, dude, but I don't want him to perform, I want myself to perform. So I would actually go to that guy and be like, you know what, why are you giving him 10,000 rupees? I'll do the same thing for 7,000 rupees, right? So now this, the, that person's got it for 7,000. So now you're like, um, I'm not getting work for 10,000, let me just cut it down to 5,000. So now I am down from 10,000 to 5,000. He's down from 7,000 to 4,000. Right? So it's slowly, steadily, your prices keep reducing. Right? And because your prices keep reducing, you're like, why should I even put in that effort? Right? And now that you don't want to put in the effort, you're not prepared. You're not worthy of performing. And because you're not worthy of performing, well, your audience members catch you out. And because your audience members catch you out, your credibility reduces. And because your credibility reduces, well, the image of magic as a whole reduces as well. And when that happens over a period of 20 years, well, this is where you are at. So, um, I've written a book, which is called You Got Magic. Uh, it's India's first legit magic book. Um, I had to really, it was a real pain for me to start uh, <laughs> start having magic as a profession because my dad is an investment banker. And when an investment banker's son wants to become a magician, it's, uh, it's a lot of work. I, I had to do a lot of convincing and I had to do a lot of, um, uh, a lot of negotiations. So, so all of this is actually in my book. Uh, my book is all about how, how I got into magic and how magic made me um, get a different perspective towards, towards everything. Uh, I will talk to you about perspective right now. Um, instead of showing, I, how about I just show you about perspective? Can I show something? Uh, can I have someone up on stage? Not you. You're, you're a magician yourself. I'm not going to call you up on stage. I will show you something, but... Um, can I have someone up on stage? Anyone? Please. Can we have a round of applause for her? There we go. Hi, what's your name? Delane. 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 Yeah. Neil, nice to meet you. Come, have a seat. There you go. Okay, so, now, 
This is all about perspective, OK? Um, you know what? Let's get you your own table, OK? Now, we have a deck of cards over here in front of you. Can you, can you mix them up first? Can you give them a nice shuffle? There we go. OK. Now, do you have any idea where all the cards are? No. Well, it's a better idea now. Yeah, now you have a better idea. Now, what I want you to do is I'm going to ask you to memorize the entire pack. <laughs> now, I know, now, I know this seems a little impossible, <laughs> but it will happen. Trust me, OK? I'll show you how, OK? Put your eye over here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you 10 seconds. I want you to just see all the cards, OK? Within 10 seconds, I just want you to see all the cards. That's it. I don't want you to memorize it. I don't want you to try to figure out that this card is there. In 10 seconds, just see all the cards, OK? Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Your time starts now. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and there we go. Would you believe me <laughs> no. if I told you that you remember where all the cards are? No. No? <laughs> okay. Let's try for the ten of clubs. Whichever card you think is the ten of clubs. No, I'm, I'm damn serious. I'm damn serious. J whichever card you think is the Ten of Clubs, just point to it. I don't know why. This one? Take it out. See it. Oh, OK. Show it to everyone else. Right? It's that simple. It's that simple. <laughs> it's all about perspective, I'm telling you. I know how it's done. That's why I'm making you do it. Right? Now, a lot of people say uh, that only magicians know how to read minds. Right? Now, I'm going to make you read my mind. OK. OK? So now, how many of you over here think Reading minds is possible. You do? OK. So now, for all of you guys who don't, I'll give you an example of mind reading, OK? Imagine you're sitting with your partner in a park, and this really hot chick just passes by, right? The guy is going to do this, <laughs> right? He hasn't said a single word, but you know exactly what's going on in his head, right? That, in a form, is mind reading, <laughs> right? Now, if a baby looks at Usain Bolt and says, how is he running so fast, he doesn't realize that he's put in all those hours and years of work and effort because of which he's, been, he's being able to run so fast, right? If the baby does all that work, one day I'm sure he'll be able to do exactly what Usain Bolt could do. Now, if you give someone steroids, they'll be able to do it themselves. So I'm going to give you some mind steroids right now, OK? I'm going to make you a mind reader just for 30 seconds. And then after that, you're not going to be able to do it. OK? okay? Um, how about we do this? Shift up. All right. <clears throat> so. Let's give it a shuffle first. Okay. okay. Oh, wow. That's nice. <laughs> right? Okay. So now this is what we're going to do. I'm going to select a playing card. Okay? Yeah. And I'm going to see it. I'm going to think of it. And I'm going to make you figure out what it is. Okay? okay? Yeah. And then you're going to do the same. Okay? Okay? Are you ready? Yeah. 
point to a playing card, whatever you want. This one? OK. And um, I'll point to this one. Take it out. Yeah, don't see it. So this one is mine, this one is yours. OK? See yours. OK? Memorize it. And put it back inside anywhere. Yeah. And let's shuffle it up so that you have absolutely no idea where my card is. I have absolutely no idea where your card is. OK? Hold the pack. Find my card. I'm damn serious. Find my card. I'll, OK, I'll, ex I'll explain to you how to do it, OK? I want you to run through the cards like this, OK? Whatever card you think that I'm thinking of, I want you to just take it out and put it down, face down. This is not the card. Okay. Okay. This is not That's the card. Like. No, 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 no. I'm not going to give anything away. This is not your card. Okay. So this is not my card. This is not your card. Ready? Ready. How long have I got? Um, before the show ends. Yeah. Okay. I'll just look aside just in case if you think I'm looking. I'm trying to send you the card. Just go with your gut. Whatever card you think that I'm thinking of. I want you to take it out and put it down. OK, whatever card you think that I'm thinking of, don't, don't go for something random. You'll get it wrong otherwise. OK, my gut. OK, just go with your gut. Okay. What do you do for a living? Um, I was a lawyer in a hedge fund. There you go. <laughs> gut feeling, yeah? You're pretty, you know how to use your gut. There you go. OK, whatever card you think that I'm thinking of, just take it out and put it down. OK. Now it's my turn. Okay. I'm going to do the same. OK? Mm -hmm. Think of your card. So this is the card that I picked for you. And this is the card that you picked for me. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. now, for the first time, can you tell us what your card was? The Eight of Diamonds. The Eight of Diamonds. Can you flip it over? Oh, that's weird. Can you show it to everyone? There we go. OK. Now, I do this every day. Clap for her when she gets it right. OK. Are you ready? Now, can I tell you what my card was? If this is right, I'm going to be so freaked. I thought of a black card. Okay. I, it was a picture card. It was a clubs, the king of clubs. Okay, that's just ridiculous. Now you can clap for her. Yeah? Now do you get an understanding of what perspective is? Because Seeing magic from a different point of view just gives you a very different perspective towards magic. Does it not? Yes, it does. I made you the magician now. How does it make you feel? Special. It makes you feel very special, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah? And how does it make you feel apart from special? What else? How, how are you feeling inside right now? Scared that I could get that right. Um, can you, can you hear her? No, I mean, like, sorry, scared that I've got it right. I've always been quite dubious about magic, and it's only something that I've started to appreciate recently. There you go. So, yeah. Uh, Surprise. You're going you're gonna to appreciate it even more now. Okay. <laughs> can we have a round of applause for her? And thank you very much. You. You've been lovely. Thank you. OK. So this is what perspective is, OK? Um, Another thing about perspective, I found, this, I found this yesterday, and I thought I should share it with you. You guys know about the symbol Om? Yeah? Do you know how long back Om was invented? 
Do you know how long back English was invented? Do you know where I'm going with this? Are you guys ready? It's going to fucking blow your minds out, huh? So this is the symbol for Om, right? This is Indian, right? But you've only seen it like this. You don't have a different perspective towards it. A different perspective would be this. Om in English, O and M, right? Now, in, in Hindi, this was written a few thousand years back. And this, I don't know. Is it, is it coincidence? If you change your perspective just by a little bit, maybe you can see things very differently, right? So now my job is to make people see things differently, like, a, like how I did with her. Now, another thing that I do is criminal psychology and uh, neuro-linguistic programming, right? Um, who over here is a good liar? Who knows how to lie really well? Come on up, come on up. There's a, there's a finger pointing at you. Oh, he's supposed to be a really good liar. Let's get him up on stage. Can we have a round of applause for him, please? How are you, sir? What's your name? Ed. What's your Ed. name? Ed. Yeah. My name is Neil. Nice to meet hi. you. Everyone say hi to Ed. Hi. All right. Um, is it okay if, if we stand for a while? There we go. This is your mic. Okay. okay. Uh, can you speak on the mic? Uh, can everyone hear him? Uh, y yeah. Can you hear me, Adrian? Thanks for getting me into He's this. He's giving the answer for himself. Yeah, everyone can hear me. Cool. Okay. Anyway. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to make you select a playing card, OK? I don't want you to show it to them. I don't want you to show it to me, OK? You take a playing card, you see it, you memorize it, and then you put it in your pocket, OK? One, just point to any playing card, whatever you want. One chance to change your mind. Do you want to stay with this one, or do you want to yeah, change it? Happy. Yeah, OK. Have a look at it. Do you have a pocket? Now, all I've got to do is remember this. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So now we shuffle the pack of cards. You picked out whatever card you wanted. I asked you if you want to change your mind. You said no. Yeah. Are you happy with the card? Yes. Okay. So now this is, we're going to do, we're going to be doing a little bit of criminal psychology with you. Okay? okay. Now I'm going to ask you questions about the playing card. You can either say the truth. Or you can lie. That's absolutely up to you. OK? But if you do lie about, the, about your answer, I, I want it to be the most convincing lie possible. OK? Try to make it really convincing so that it's really hard for us to catch you out. OK? And then based on your lies or your truths, we'll try to figure out what your card is. OK? Make sense? Yes, I can makes, tell the truth if I want. Makes sense to all of you guys? Yeah? I can tell the truth. You can tell the truth, but put a lie somewhere in the middle to mix it up. OK? okay? Otherwise, it gets really boring, OK? It's called showmanship. You need to lie once in a while, yeah? OK, so Ed, it could either be a red card or it could be a black card. Is it a red card? No. No. Is it a black card? Yes. How many of you think it's the truth? How many of you think it's a lie? You think it's a lie? Yes. What's the truth and what's the lie? I'm asking you. I know what it is, but I'm asking you. I no, he's, it, he said, said... it wasn't a red card. I said it was a black card. So is that... Am I telling you the truth or am I lying? So most of you people who think... So raise your hands. Who, who's, who thinks it's a lie? All you guys are wrong. It's the truth? Absolute truth. Absolute truth. Now do, you, now, do you see how calm he is right now, right? 
and also when he wanted to reconfirm, he made that extra movement just to reconfirm that I am saying the truth, right? So that is how you catch someone out when they're saying the truth, right? Okay, so now it is a black card. It could either be a spades or it could be a clubs. Yeah, you know, you, you know both of them? Okay, so it could either be a spades or it could be a clubs. Is it a spades, Ed? No. Is it a clubs? Yes. Now what do you think? Is he lying or is he saying the truth? <laughs> See, that smile reveals it. He like, in his head, this is exactly what's happening. He like, yeah, I got them again. Yeah? I got them again. I got them again. There you go. So it's a, it's a clubs, yes. right? Yes. Now, it could either be a number card or it could be a picture card. Ed, is it a number card? No. Is it a picture card? Yes. You want me to do it again once for you guys? I've got it. You want me to do it once again for you guys? OK. Ed, is it a number card? No. You know you can change your answer as well. If no. you want, no. that's absolutely up to you. Yeah. Okay. Is it a picture card? Yes. Yes. How many of you think it's, an, it's, a, it's a number card? How many of you think it's a picture card? Picture cards. You thought I was going to go there, yeah? I'll have to do this one again, okay? Yeah. Um, is it a number card? No. Is it a picture card? Yes. How many of you think he's lying? How many of you think he's saying the truth? So for the people who, who, who are saying it's a lie, that means it is a number card, yeah? Uh, this, time, this time you did lie. I did? Yes, you did lie. I did. Um, which means it's the six of clubs. Which means it is the six of clubs. Right? Yes. Do you know how I reached to the six? No. Because in your... Okay, so now here's the thing. All our attention right now is over here. Right? Because all our attention is over here, you are trying your level best not to give anything away. Yes. Which is only over here. So consciously, all your attention is over here. Subconsciously, you've forgotten your body, right? Do you know how many times you tapped your foot? No. Six times. Which told, which told me it's, it's a six. Okay. Yeah? What if it was a king? Uh, for, that, for that, I have a different uh, thing. You want, me, you want me to do a picture card? So it is the six of clubs, right? It is. It is. Um, what we'll upsets me is my partner thinks I'm lying all the time. He's quite an honest man. <laughs> Trust him once in a while, I guess. Twice and three times, you should trust him. Because he lied the third time. Yeah? OK. However, she wanted to know how, it's, how to do it with a picture card, right? So um, try taking out a picture card. Is that a picture card? Uh, no, put it back in. Take another one out. Is that a picture card? Yes. OK. I'm telling the truth. That's, that's a picture card? Yes. Put in your pocket. OK. So the, um, so. Your smile confirms that it's somewhat similar. It's a clubs? Yes. OK. Um, OK, so it, it's a clubs. It could, and it's a picture card. So it could either be a jack, queen, or a king. Yes. Could you guys figure it out? I'll do it again, OK? This time I'll make it a little simple for you. I'm going to say all I'm going to say all the cards jack queen king and ace okay whenever i reach to your card i want you to say stop in your head not out loud but in your head okay 
he will say stop somewhere in his head. Try to figure out when. OK? Ed, are you ready? Yes. OK. Jack, queen, king, ace. Let's do it again. Yeah. <laughs> OK, hang on. Sorry. Just for, just for the other people, OK? I've got it, OK? okay? But just for the other people, OK? Pay a little more attention, OK? Are you ready, Ed? Yes. Jack, queen, king, ace. How many of you think it's a jack? How many of you think it's a queen? How many of you think it's a king? Now, most of you raised their hands up on queen, right? Because he kind of went like, he kind of relaxed a bit, yeah? Do you know why you relax a bit? Because your card's already gone. Right? <laughs> so it's the jack of clubs. There you go. Right? Thank you very much, Ed. Thank you. There you go. Give him a round of applause, guys. So, um, so I started using criminal psychology and NLP to do all my stuff. And, um, and then what I realized was that I can use it way beyond magic. I can use it for a lot of other things as well. Um, some of them being trying to figure out things that people think. Um, Or maybe I'll just talk for a while and then I'll do something else. I've been performing for way too much, okay? So, sorry, just give me a sec. So now in order for me to, oh, that's my book. Can I, can, give me my book. Buy my book, people, yeah? <laughs> Thank you. Well done. Okay, so, um, so I had to f get myself a television show, which wasn't the easiest thing. Where is he? That man over here, who's my father, say hi to him. Yeah. Uh, he was the one who helped me get the show. And um, it's kind of, kind of tough as well. Uh, I had to convince him. He's the investment banker who needed a lot of convincing. Yeah. Uh, so, so this is how I had. This is how I convinced him. Uh, there's this gentleman called James Randi, who's this 80-year-old guy, and he is. Uh, he's the godfather of magic. Uh, he's the one who gave uh, David Copperfield, David Blaine, Chris Angel their first shows. Um, He's this 80-year-old man. He's bald. He's got a beard as long as Dumbledore's. And uh, he, he roams around with a stick. And that stick has a skull with a beard, which is basically him, right, when he's dead. It's kind of ironic, but it's kind of cool. And uh, any man he meets, in the next 30 seconds, they're rolling on the floor laughing. He's, I don't know what he is. He's something else altogether. So I went up to him and I'm like, holy shit, you're James Randi, right? He's like, yes, sir, I am. So I'm like, can I show you something? He's like, yeah, go for it. And it just happened so that the first trick that I ever performed for the godfather of magic, I screwed up. So I'm like, great. That's one way of becoming a magician. So, uh, so he saw that I was a little nervous, so he sat me down. And, uh, and he had a conversation with me. I think it lasted approximately more than two hours or something. Yeah, it, it was a conversation with the godfather of magic. And I was uh, 18 years at that time. Uh, it, was, it was pretty encouraging. And then after a point, he was like, uh, now you don't seem nervous at all. So why don't you show me something? So I did. And uh, that is when he called up my dad and he's like, uh, let your son become a magician, I order you. Yeah. So he didn't really have a choice then. Um, so 
yeah, that was that is how I convinced convinced my dad, and um, and then one thing led on to another. Um, did you know that not even once in my life did I imagine that I would write a book. Not even once in my life did I imagine that I would come on a stage like this. But I am, and you guys are here listening, so something's happening right, you know? Um, so when I started doing criminal psychology and NLP, it gave me a different perspective towards things, right? Now, what do I mean by that? When I started performing, I used to get a lot of different reactions. For example, she said, uh, I didn't really know, I, I was a little iffy about magic, but now, you believe? I believe, right? She believes, right? Now, in order for me to change someone's mindset, there are a lot of things that I need to do. I need to figure out where their mindset is right now, right? And then I need to figure out, okay, now that the mindset is this, I need them to think that, right? How do I get them from this mindset and how do I guide them towards there without them feeling forced about it? Right? So if someone else would have come up on stage and I would have seen that, okay, uh, she or he really likes magic, for example, him, uh, I would have done something different, right? Now it's your turn. Now I'm going to do something different with you. I'm going to show them what I was going to do if I had someone who had a little bit of knowledge about magic, okay? Now, come have a seat. You want to introduce yourself to everyone? My name is Rudra, and I'm from Swansea, Wales. OK. Uh, so this is Rudra from Swan Swansea. I mean, technically, you're from Indore. Oh, sorry, yes. you're, you're studying in Swansea. Yeah, right. OK? Big difference. <laughs> OK? Indore, India. Yeah, he's Indian. He's not from England. OK? <laughs> ridiculous, man. Yeah? Okay. So, select a playing card, whatever you want. Yeah. Take it out. Have a look. Show it to everyone. I can see it as well. Yeah? Six of clubs? Who chose the six of clubs before this? Why, why are you choosing the same card? Okay. Anyway. So, we have the six of clubs, right? Actually, I should stand for this. Okay, so, so we have the six of clubs, right? We take the six, and we put it in the middle, right? Goes all the way in. You saw it come up? Did you guys see it come up? It's back on top, right? Now, hang on, I'll do this again, okay? You take the six, you put it inside somewhere over there. Did you see it come up? <laughs> it's back on top, right? I'll do it. I'll do it once more. Okay. Six of clubs goes all the way in. Right. Now, before I do that, I just want to show you that the ace of hearts is on top. Okay? You do. You saw it come up? Back on top. Right? Now, hold on to this. A lot of people say that I'm not really putting in that card, I'm putting some other card. So this time I want you to put in the card. Okay? Say stop whenever you want. One chance to change your mind. Yeah? Put the card here. Okay? So just as a reminder, the six of clubs, right? goes all the way in, mm -hmm. right? No funny business. All, okay, make sure I don't do anything stupid. It goes all the way in. Actually, push it in, push it in. Oh. 
Mm -hmm. Thank you. So this is, this is what you call attention in attention, right? Now, in magic, we use this a lot. We make sure that all the attention is down here, and then we do all the dirty work up here where the attention isn't, right? Now, I know, I know you're learning my book, so this is a lot of good feedback for you, right? So good, well done, you're here. Hey, sit, man. Okay. Now, you remember I did one card with her? Right. I did one card with her memorizing. I'll do three cards with you. Okay? We'll make it a little tougher because you're, you're into magic, right? A lot of people. Whoa. Okay? Are you ready? 10 seconds, and you're ready to go, OK? Are you ready? So that we can see all the cards. Yep. OK, you have 10 seconds. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and there we go. Yeah? Do you know roughly where every card is? <laughs> Confidence. Yeah? Now, um, I want you to go for the six of spades. Whichever card you think is a six of spades, point to it. Take it out. Yeah? There we go. OK. Now, let's put this aside. Actually, you know what? Let's do it a little differently. Uh, why don't you get me the 10 of spades? Which one? This one? This one, yeah. OK. Let's take this out. Let's make you do another one. Let's do the nine of diamonds. This, no, that's the six. That, we just took that out. Which one? Which one? This one. This one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, now let's go for the Jack of Hearts. Which one? The Jack of Hearts. Okay. Now, you remember I was doing it with you as well? Yeah. I was memorizing it as well. Um, let's go for the Jack of Spades. Yeah. Um, I'll, 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 I'll try that, yeah? Do you guys remember all the cards? Do you remember all the cards? Um, you remember the first one was the ten of spades, right? Yeah? Well done. Uh, then we had the Jack of Hearts, mm -hmm. yeah? The Jack of Hearts, yeah? And then we had the Jack of, the Nine of Diamonds or something? Yes. Yeah? Well done. And then we had the Jack of Spades, which I removed, with the Jack of Spades, right? So we have the Ten of Spades, the Jack of Hearts, the Nine of Diamonds, and the Jack of Spades, exactly how he took out based on just memory techniques that I just gave him just for five seconds, because if he does it now, he won't be able to do it because I won't let him. Right? Thank you very much. There you go. Now, yesterday, I was doing something, and I wanted to actually uh, have you guys make a few random decisions. <clears throat> I have six minutes. Okay.
Okay. Cool, so let's do this. Uh, I have yesterday's, um, I have yesterday's newspaper, and I have this, okay? Let's keep that over here for right now. Um, or let's do it with you, okay? I have the evening standards, right? Uh, I'm just gonna run through the pages like this. I want you to say stop whenever you want. Before it ends, yeah? Here? Okay. So you have landed on 16. Oh, okay. So you have 15 and 16 and 53 and 54. Okay. Can you hold on to this? Um, can, you, can you tear it in half? No, 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 open it up. Open it up. Yep. A little more neatly, if that's okay. Yep. Now, can you hand, can you hand one to the j lady over there? Perfect. So which one, which one are you left with? Sure, okay. Can you, can you stand up? Can you tilt it, can you tilt it horizontally? Yeah, can you tear it again? Yeah. Get it together, tear it again. Uh, yeah, tear it vertically, yeah. Put it again. Yeah, keep on tearing it, keep on tearing it. There you go. There you go. Yeah? Once more. Right? Um, can you give it to her? Now, hang on. Yeah, now, can you, can you divide it into two? Yeah. Right? Hold them out in both your hands, right? Now, on the count of three, I'm going to ask you to drop either one. Whichever one you feel you want to drop, just drop it. OK? One, two, three, drop. There you go. No, 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 that, that, that's drop. And these to me. OK, now, um, someone else? Uh, let's, let's do it with you, OK? Yeah. So what I'm going to do from the back, because you can see the fronts, I'm just going to take all the papers and I'm just going to keep throwing them, right? Whichever one you want to stop at before the papers finish, just say stop. OK. Um, Sir, can you come over here? Can you, can you hold on to the one? Can you hold on to this one, wherever he stopped? Yeah, can you come up on stage? Give him a round of applause, guys. <laughs> yep. OK. Now. Or oh, we have some words over here. What's a nice long word that you can see? Mightiest. Mightiest, right? OK, so now here's the thing. That's not the only uh, word, long word. There's flights, there's easier, there's primate, there's norm reports, but you chose mightiest, right? Now, let me explain to you what exactly happened. We took the evening standards. We went through all the pages like this. She stopped me. Who stopped me? You stopped me? You stopped me wherever, right? On page 15 and 14 and 53 and 54. Then you tore it in half, and then you chose to give uh, one of them away, right? And then you tore those in half, and then you threw one down. 
and then out of all of those, you chose one of them, right? And then from that one piece of paper, you chose the word mightiest. Did you know I knew this? Who's laughing? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, no, I'm damn serious. You don't believe me? You need proof. No, I'm damn serious. This prediction, can you open it up? Yeah, yeah, yeah take it out. We have page 15 and 16 and 53 and 54, you want to open it up? What's written over here? He's, he's processing it right now. It's highlighted, mightiest. So the word mightiest that he chose is highlighted, and it says, you will end up choosing the word mightiest. Show it to everyone. Give it a long. Thank you very much, sir. That's it from me. Uh, don't forget to buy my book. And uh, peace out, guys. We'd like to thank Neil Madhav for that wonderful...